So, you've decided that you want to go to IAE this year for 2951. Alright, you're going to die at some point. So I thought I'd start dead and then show you how you go ahead and get off the planet, basically. So you'll spawn with complementary stuff. You don't get the hammers or pen or the medgun, but you do get the flight suit and the helmet. I recommend having a hammers or pen just in case someone else falls over and dies, because then you can wake him up with it. And the medgun for if you somehow break your legs falling upstairs or something. Which does happen. Now, I'm on Port Tresler above New Babbage, so I'll show you how to get down to New Babbage and actually land. So you can then get on the train and go to the right place. I don't spend very much time on this place, I already went the wrong way. Oh, I see the elevators are slow again. I'm going to assume that you already know how to play the game. If you don't, I recommend going ahead and watching Morphologist's new video. So, well, not new at this point, but his guide, his new player guide. I'll link that in the description just because why not? So, if you didn't spawn a new Babbage, once you're done quantuming, you can. Unlock your speed limiter if you go ahead and use the scroll, or a button if you bound one. And you're looking for a train track that goes to just a building in the middle of nowhere. And that building is there. There it is. Now don't approach the floor too fast because your ship won't be able to slow down and you will explode on the floor. Once you get within tower range, you can press F11, friends, and then go ahead and request landing. Now, if you find landing hard, you can go ahead and use the scroll wheel to reduce your speed. Or you can just simply, well, go at full speed. But with atmosphere, it is it takes slightly longer to slow down than it would otherwise. Which is why I almost crashed already. You can go ahead and use third person to make it easier to land. Not everyone finds it easier to land. But I do, so that's what I've done. Now, once you're down here, you'll need to go into the med bay and then go ahead and set your spawn. Or you can go ahead and just spawn back wherever it was it was last. Because with medical gameplay, you have to set your spawn point. So I'll be going over there, setting the spawn point, and then simultaneously it will show me how 
it will show you how to go ahead and get to the IAE center going the other way. You will see bugged out embassies like this. I wish CIG would let me turn them off because look at my frame rate. I'm only at 60% GPU usage. And I'm at 22 FPS basically. That's just simply because my CPU is being hammered by there being a bunch of random NPCs that have absolutely no use yet. So yeah, gee, please allow me to just turn them off. So you'll see signs like this all around the place that will just simply show you how to go ahead and get there. But we're going to be going straight past it to the medical center first so I can show you how to set your spawn point, show you how to buy a hemazole pen and a med gun because you'll probably be needing those as I already said earlier you can go ahead and just randomly fall over or due to player desync you could end up colliding with one and dying which happened to me earlier Now you do have signs and screens everywhere that will tell you how long until a train gets there or departs and where it's going. Uh, there are maps somewhere on the walls. I don't know where I'm going, but it's probably in the right direction. I'll leave it with this stop or the one after it to go ahead and set my spawn point. I will find out shortly. Yeah, I would seem to be where I need to be to set my spawn point. This is also where you'd go ahead and spawn. So you'd get out of a bed, go down an elevator, and then more or less pop out in the same place, which is just in front of the medical hangar, or medical center, sorry. So you'll go ahead and spawn over this way and come out of those elevators over there, but probably these elevators over here. So once you're done on your bed, you come out the elevator, you go this way, and then you'd go down those stairs there. But because I've just come in and I'm setting my spawn point, I'll go between the stairs. You will then see terminals everywhere. I don't know which ones it is to set my spawn point. That's patient check-in. That's for grabbing a room. Patient check-in again. Hmm. Where have they been moved? Well, technically I've never set my spawn point here. So I don't know. Okay, as you can see, when you have a bunch of NPCs around, little effects like this going on, your game's going to start chugging. Quite hard, to be honest. That's the pharmacy. So in the pharmacy, you can go ahead and click on MISC, or well, it does it automatically. Hemisol allows you to revive other players and obviously heal yourself. 
If you go into personal weapons, you can buy the paramed gun, which will allow you to heal yourself if you didn't go incapacitated. Or die, which sometimes happens. Now how the hell do I spe set my spawn point here? I think I know what they've done, which is stupid. So I'm going to have to set a... I'm going to have to gra grab a room, go into the room, and then go ahead and set my spawn point there, rather than do it down here at Terminal. So what was it? it was floor 5, room 4. It currently doesn't show it on your HUD, which is silly. So you actually have to remember things in this game, which you shouldn't have to. I have a space helmet on with a built-in headset display. Why can't it just show where I'm going? Alright, the signs don't even say what medical rooms they are. That would be eight. Uh, the side name, maybe? Oh, four is this way, so room five or four. You're in the way of my screen. Regeneration, transfer imprint, okay. My imprint is transferred. If I go ahead and die, I'll be spawning in one of these med rooms. Now, let's go ahead and go down to the expo center. It's bizarre, the elevator's not working. No, it's not an elevator, there's someone else's room. <laughs> Yeah, there they are. Yeah, getting lost in this game is something you're going to be doing more often than not, to be honest. Yeah, this is definitely my first time being here and setting a spawn point and actually buying things. Because I've only ever come here the once, originally, when medical gameplay was added to life. And that was because I fell down these stairs because I jumped. So I jumped, landed in the middle, snapped my foot or something, and fell on my face. Died. Instantly. Non capacitated, just dead. Now, you'll see these signs everywhere, which I said earlier. And then you'll just simply wait. It will tell you how long it's going to take for the train to get there. And both sides are actually working this year. Occasionally you'll find things that are backwards, as if they've been pulled through each other. So where we are now is there. Our next stop should be the Expo Center, and then it'll go to Commons and then New Babbage. So you just simply get into one train and then get right back off. And then you'll be at the Expo Center main hall, basically. And then you'll need to go up the stairs, grab an elevator, and pick which manufacturer you want to go to. Manufacturers are there for two days, so 24 hours where you can buy their ships and stuff. And then the next day, a new manufacturer will go ahead and like go there. And then the other manufacturer from the day previous will still be available to go to. So you can see two manufacturers at any one time. Now, you probably noticed by this point that my field of view is higher. That's because I spend the majority of my time inside of ships. And you can't see your MFDs. Like, when I'm in my Sabre, I see two out of four MFDs, which are the multi-function screens. Which is abysmal. I want to see all four. So I just simply go ahead and put my field of view way higher than it's supposed to be. So 126 instead of the maximum 100 the game lets you set. So you come out the stairs, uh, no, you, you come out of the train, you go up the stairs, and then you will be pointing in the right direction. 
Now you have signs everywhere that will say things. What is this? I don't think I saw that last year. Actually, no, I wasn't playing last year. I didn't go to the IE last year. So you get little things that are around the place. Crusader, Origin, Drake, things like that. You can go ahead and just buy the t-shirts and the hats. Uh, I'm not going to buy any. But I will go ahead and run around just to see where they are. So obviously you get the IE 2951 ones. Which just simply means you don't have to go ahead and grab one. Like an Argo Cargo one. You'd have to watch one of Morph's videos to understand what, what that was. But it was a terrible attempt at doing it anyway. I wonder if you do anything this year. Nope. I still don't understand why we have NPCs roaming around and doing stuff when they just simply cut your frame rate away and don't actually do anything. Why are there so many people in the elevators doing nothing? Expo lobby Xenophil. Why is it called Xenophil? That it's Anvil today. Oh, whatever. Well, that giant hole in the middle is new. Didn't see that last time. But you go up either the ramp or the stairs. I recommend the ramp. Because if you go up those stairs, you're probably going to fall over by the time you get to the top, and you will die. Well, we have arrived. Now, with food and drink, you're going to have to take off your helmet, so I'm just going to take that off. And I want a burrito. Now, if you look down, holding F, you can go ahead and inspect it and stuff. Uh, okay. Go ahead and inspect it and just like, turn it around in your hand for whatever reason. I'm just going to eat it. Because you will need to go ahead and eat food and drink drinks whilst you're here. Because there's probably going to be quite a few ships here. It is Anvil after all. Now you'll have separate rooms. you have rooms off over there. As well as rooms off to the other side sometimes. And I think there was a room at the back at one point. So I'm going to cut this one here. I'll just simply go between these. Just check. Uh, da, 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 I'm a character. Nope, all of the audio ones are the same. So I'm going to cut it here and then go to the first ship, I suppose. I'll probably pick the arrow or something, because why not? First up, let's look at the Anvil arrow. Now, uh, yes, my field of view is still very high. I'm not going to be turning it down at all. So underneath you have two size 2 gimbals, which you can change out for two size 3 fixed weapons if you're a competent pilot. On the top, which I can't quite see from down here, you have a turreted thing which has two fixed size 1s on it, which allows it to have more damage than a single size 2, but less damage than a size 3. So I'd recommend changing it out for three fixed size 3s if you're able to pilot very well, and you don't need the well, benefits of Gimbaled, which they're not really benefits, to be honest. So, on the wings, which can be shot off, by the way, you have one size 2 rack, and then one size 3 rack on each wing. So, two size 2, two size 3. 
you have one shield generator, one power plant, two coolers, and a quantum drive. Which is standard outside of the fact that it has one shield. Which is to go ahead and counter the fact that it handles extremely well in space and extremely well in atmosphere. It also accelerates incredibly quickly thanks to this massive, massive engine on the back. Now, if we go ahead and jump inside, which is done just down there. If it doesn't let you, you can open the pilot canopy first and then it should let you in. Inside you have four MFDs, but it's sort of two screens, so they sort of pair up on each side, which I don't honestly like at all. Now, the default skin for it is, well, kind of bizarre, to be honest. Let's move the camera into place. I should then be able to orbit it. So you can see that when those wings fold down, obviously you can fire the missiles, you can still fire them when they're up. But if they snap off, your atmospheric flight will go down, and you won't have any missiles left. You can also see the turreted thing on the top. And it's a very small ship. Not very much to it, to be honest. So, that was it for the Anvil Arrow. I will go ahead and move on to the next ship in a moment. So, running behind the Anvil Arrow, you have the Anvil Gladiator. This strange monstrosity of a ship. So, it has two fixed size threes for the pilot. I don't know if the turret on top can be slaved to the pilot or not, but that's another two fixed size threes. It can have four size three missile racks, and the ship has two bespoke size six missile racks, which will hold two size five missiles each. It has two size one shield generators, one size one power generator, two size one coolers, and a quantum drive. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't have any skins at the moment and if we go ahead and hop inside we can see what that's like because I've never been in the ship so let's have a look it's got six MFD screens and thanks to my field of view I can actually see otherwise what would likely be seen is this at a normal field of view which is well four screens and half screens so let's go ahead and have a look at the other side this is a lot bigger than I thought it was like, it's big, it's kind of ugly, but it's also alright at the same time, which is strange. I'm trying to figure out where those missiles are. I'm just going to do this. Aha, that's where they are. So you have the four size five missiles underneath, apparently. Now when you jump out of a ship, it closes them, so I can't jump out and have a look, unfortunately. So that was the Anvil Gladiator. I personally wouldn't fly it, because I prefer other ships. I don't... like. I like the styling, but I also don't at the same time. It's a bizarre ship. So heading to the other side, also turning off chat, going past the Gladiator and then back past the Arrow, You'll go ahead and get to the expedition. Is this? Yeah. You go ahead and get to the expedition variant of the um, Amble Pisces, which is the tiny little snub fighter that which goes in the Carrack. I'll be doing the Carrack last. So this ship has two fixed size ones on the front and two gimbaled size ones on the side. Now it can only have size one weapons on the ship. It also has one size one missile rack on each side, so it can have one size one missile on each side, or two in total. Now, heading inside, after you put your helmet back on, you can use your torch. No helmet on, you can't use a torch. You'll have little um, places for the ship modules, which are one, shield, no, one size one shield generator, one size one power plant, and then two size one coolers and a quantum drive. So you have enough space in here for a small amount of cargo, as well as a couple of people to stand up. You have two chairs for passengers, and then you have the pilot seat. Now heading into the pilot seat, we can see that we have 
a grand total of I'm gonna call that four MFT screens because I don't think these tiny little things are no they're not I believe this has four MFT screens and once again because of my field of view this is probably what you'd see when you're flying it and this is what I see when I'm flying so I can actually see all four of my MFT screens now looking on the outside you can see that the ship is fairly large to be honest so if what you're looking for is a small snub fighter to go into the Anvil Carrack, just over there, the big thing, I would probably say that you're better off with an Aurora LN. Because that one has two size 1 shield generators instead of the one of the ship. It has a smaller frame as well. So it's a cool little snub fighter. It's specifically designed to go into the Carrack. Probably fixed in a bunch of other places. I would probably go ahead and fly it, but I would not buy it. Now, if we head behind the Anvil Pisces, we'll go ahead and go to the Anvil Hawk, which is, as far as I'm aware, it's the strangest looking ship in the game. So, this has a lot of guns, but they're not very big. So, it has two fixed size ones and four fixed size twos. It also has a size 2 EMP, two size 1 shield generators, one size 1 power plant, and two size 1 callers along with its quantum drive. And now, I don't know where any of its weapons are. So let's have a look. So it's got two, I'm going to say size 2s there. It's got two size 2s down there. Where are the other ones at? Yeah, they're up there. The size ones, I'm going to guess, are probably on the top if they're not the ones here at the front. Now, how do I get inside you? Ah, it's a front loady thing. So the chair comes down at the front and then you get in. Let's have a look around. So, why can't I move my camera anymore? Why can't I do any? thing anymore. Yeah, there we go. So if we look around on the outside, it is a very bizarre shaped ship. Like a very bizarre one. So if you think it looks weird when it has its landing gear down, it looks a lot weirder when it has them up, but unfortunately I can't put them up. Now I want to see what that thing at the back is. What's this thing? Seems to have a small cargo hold or something. Or maybe that's where the EMP is supposed to go, I don't know. I can't get in it. Oh, well, it's a very strange ship. It has a heck of a lot of guns. Has okay survivability. Probably has good handling, I suppose, because it's an ambush ship. Would I fly it? Well, I'll certainly try it. I may as well, considering you can rent all these ships. So I'll try it, but I probably wouldn't buy it. it. It's not my kind of... It's not visually pleasing, to say the least. Now, if we go ahead and run behind the Anvil Hawk, you'll see the Anvil Hurricane instead. Now, this one is good for you and one other person, because to have its full damage capability, you need two people. So, the pilot has access to four size 2 missile racks. It also has access to two size 3 gimbals by default, which you can change out for two fixed size 4s. The turret gunner has access to four size 3 fixed weapons on a turret, which is a ridiculous amount of firepower. Now, the ship has one size 2 shield generator, one size 2 power plant, two size 1 coolers, and it's quantum drive. Now, to get into the little turret seat, you go underneath over here, and it doesn't seem to allow me to go into the turret. I can only rent it, so I can go into the pilot seat at least. Now, this ship is a heck of a lot of power in a pretty damn small frame, to be honest. Like, it is larger 
than some of the other ships, but the amount of DPS to size? It's ridiculously good. Now, the colour is... strange, to say the least. It's red underneath and then green on top, like... I'm sorry, what? what why would you do that? That's just a strange colour combination. So, as long as you have at least one other person to fly with, this ship is the smallest one that you're going to get with the largest amount of DPS to size. So I highly recommend this ship if you have one other person that you're going to be playing with often. Would I fly it? Yes. Would I buy it? If I had friends, but I don't have friends, so no. Now, as I've said, I'm going to do the Anvil Carrick last. So I'm going to head underground, down the stairs, to the two ground vehicles that are down there, and then the one concept vehicle. I don't recommend yeeting yourself over that balcony because you could snap your legs and you'll just drop dead. So, first up we have the Anvil Ballista. So this has two size 2 weapons on the top for a turret user. The pilot has just the missiles on the back, which are very good missiles. You have two size 5 missile racks, which each hold four size 5 missiles. So eight size 5 missiles. You also have two size 7 missile racks which hold one size 7 missile each. So two size 7 missiles. It has two size 0 shield generators, one size 0 power plant and one size 0 cooler. So you could very easily overheat the ship or go ahead and fit it with the wrong weapons and then go ahead and use way too much power. So if I turn my flashlight on you have the little turret seat at the back, this little gunner seat. So if I just jump in there. So just there is that really big turret thing, so it can go ahead and shoot both people on the ground, ground vehicles, and then obviously the big one, stuff in the air for going ahead and making them keep their distance basically so that missiles have a chance to lock because they do have a minimum range which you won't be able to shoot if they go ahead and go below now it has a lot of mfd screens it has seven of them now because of my field of view i can see all of them all at once but what you guys would see is just simply this probably Huh? Huh. Apparently the pilot is able to use the turret. I doubt they're able to drive at the same time, but you can at least use it. So that was the Anvil Ballista. Would I use it as a ground vehicle? If I think I'm going to be going against a lot of ships, yes, I would use it. Otherwise I'll be using the next one. So if we just go ahead and run over to the other side, we will have the new ground vehicle that literally came out this patch, the Anvil Spartan. Now, if you're not going up against ships, then you'll be going up against the ground vehicles. And you have a lot of people in here. So if you have at least half of these with energy weapons, any ground vehicle, or any ground force for that matter, is going to be decimated. Now, while it doesn't have the best weaponry, because it literally just has one turret on the top, which has two size 2 guns, that's it. Um, it does have at least a good amount of shields and space for a lot of people inside. So it has two size 0 shield generators, which for a ground vehicle, it's good. It's the same as the ballista. It also has one size 0... Uh, power plant and one size zero cooler. So in this one, you're not going to overheat it or overload it because you just simply can't get big enough weapons on it. It seems to have the same cockpit as the other one, but these MFDs actually turned on. <laughs> That's nice. Can I drive it? Oh, no. Give me my foot pedal though. Um, so yeah, seven MFDs. My field of view allows me to see them all. Now this one is very good for if you have community events or you have a heck of a lot of friends and you want to do ground missions or take over outposts which I'm sure will become missions at some point 
where you can go ahead and just simply raid an entire base and just steal everything. So this ground vehicle, it's new, it's good, and it's designed specifically for transporting a hell of a lot of troops across the ground, so you don't get shot down by anti-air turrets, and those turrets don't tend to shoot ground vehicles. So you can just go right past them, straight into the base, and wipe them out. Now if I go ahead and just turn around, you'll see this test the limits part. This is normally where concept ships get shown off. I don't think I've ever seen a ship actually placed down here. Just these concept cubes, basically. So this is the Anvil Liberator. It's designed to be a ship transporter with two, I believe it's size, like small size um, landing pads on it. And apparently I have NPCs in the way, so I'm just going to have to push one out of the way, I guess. Move it. So let's try and read this with a stupid NPC in the way. So, Anvil Liberator. Manufacture, Anvil Aerospace. Focus, Transporter. Anvil continues its tradition of excellency with the Liberator, an open-air vehicle carrier designed with the same quantum drive and long-distance capabilities of military spec carriers and pathfinders, but tailored to the civilian market. The Liberator is the ideal carrier to put your fleet on your front line of any operation. So, I believe it should be able to carry a couple of sabers. Now, while CIG have nuked the saber into the ground, I'll explain in a couple of days when I get around to doing the video of the saber, but you can certainly fit a whole bunch of ships on here, because while it looks small here in concept, it's very big. Like, it's exceptionally big. Now, I don't know much about it, mostly because it's all speculation and CIG's sort of attempt at saying, like, oh, we'll have this and that. So, look forward to this eventually. But if you want a troop transport, you can go ahead and just simply grab a couple of little Pisces and then just load a crap ton of those Pisces onto this thing. So, while I travel to the next area to look at the rest of the ships, I will go ahead and explain the issue with the Sabre, because why not? So the Sabre originally had three shield generators to counter a lot of points that put it down below the Hornet. So those points are, the Sabre is available once a year during IAE, it's more expensive to buy in-game, and it also has, hmm, what is it? 40 3% larger surface area than the Hornet, and it only has 57% of its HP. Which means it takes a lot less time to blow up a Sabre than it does a Hornet, which sticks it below the Hornet. Not to mention it has less maneuverability than the Hornet, and it has less ability to dump all its DPS in one go, because it has less ability to have a lot of guns at once. And if you stick all of those points together, then it means that CIG even need to take account for its second power plant, give back a third shield temporarily, slash mix it with a size 0, so you have two size 1s and a size 0, that would, I suppose, fix it, or have it so that there is a shield modifier, give the Sabre 25% extra top-end HP pool, no, no change to its regenerate, just simply allow it to have 25% extra HP in its pool, and you'll go ahead and negate them. You negate all of those issues, because as it currently stands, a veteran pilot in a Sabre will lose to an okay-ish pilot in a Hornet, which is unacceptable CIG. Please fix it. Like, it's not hard. Just temporarily give it back its third shield, or give it a new thing, a shield modifier. Or go ahead and actually use both its power plants. Because currently you can put one solar site on it, overclock it and take off the other power plant. And your EM and IR go down a little bit. And it makes no change whatsoever to the class to play. Which is dumb, because it should. Right, we're now here in the Arch Nemesis Zone. These are all 
Sabre competitors. They're all different variants, and as it currently stands, the Hornet is better than the Sabre. Which should never be the case, considering the Sabre is a military spec craft, and these ones here are civilian spec ones. So how are they better than the Sabre? See the previous video to find out why. <laughs> because they broke the Sabre. So if we head inside of this one, we can see that we have six MFD screens and a thing in the middle that will probably at some point do something. If we look on the outside, you have a storage box just there on the middle. And looking down here, you have two massive air intakes. Those massive air intakes go ahead and fuel this bad boy. This humongous, humongous jet engine thing at the back. Now, the ship handles... Um, mm, it handles okay in space. It handles better than the Sabre, but not by much. But by enough that it's it, it's a difference. But in atmospheric flight, this one wins over the Sabre every time. Now if we move just behind it, we can see the first variant of it, which is the Wildfire one. So this was made as part of the Master of Flight series, which was when Arena Commander was added, the flight sim, that you can play from the main menu. So the Wildfire pays tribute to famed pilot Aria Riley for her distinguished service with the legendary squ Squadron 42. Squadron 42 will be released at some point. This Hornet comes equipped with her own personal selected loadout preference and the custom library, which is why it says fire, yeah, wildfire on the side. Wildfire, animal arrows of space. So with these ships, all of them, you can have one size four on the top, and then you can have three size three, one on each of the two wings, and then one just below the nose over here. If we move over to the Super Hornet, which is the one just there, you can go ahead and instead choose to put two size twos on the top, and two size ones on the bottom, alongside its two size threes on the side. If we go over to the other side, just over here, you have the Hornet Tracker, which is designed to hunt down other ships, and it has a radar dish on the top, so if you put a weapon on the top, you'll lose its tracking ability, basically. And on the other side, we have its polar opposite, the Hornet Ghost, designed to hide from other ships, but the same thing. If you take off its cap at the top, it will lose some of its ability to go stealth, as well as have an increased EM and IR signature, which makes it easier for the tracker to hunt it down. Now, there is another variant which is somewhat like the Wildfire, where it's just a custom random variant. Now, if we jump here in the middle, we have the F7A. So, the F7A, if I just jump inside and move over to its specs, it has two size 4 weapons, and then it has two size 4 weapons on the turret at the top here, and then two size 3 gimbaled weapons somewhere. So, on the wings, it has two size 4s, on the top it has two size 4s, and on the front, which I'm going to assume is this little turret thing, that's two size 3s, which you might be able to change out for a size 4. However, the F7A is not an in-game flyable ship, because it is a complete badass at doing its job. So, if at some point the F7A is added, the F8 8A will also be added, which is the F8A Lightning. But yeah, that's for the next section. So I forgot to have a look. <laughs> I jumped in it and forgot to say what the MFD screens are. So this one is the only variant that has a bespoke internal layout for the MFD screens and buttons and stuff. And it looks amazing. So you have two. MFD screens, one on each side. My field of view isn't actually high enough to see them. But a normal field of view would have you see this, which allows you to see, well, three, uh, no, four. Four hemisphere screens. It might be six, but I believe it's just four. 
So out of the Sabre and the F7A, I would prefer the F7A. Out of the Sabre and everything else in the room, I would rather the Sabre. Even though the Sabre has been nuked into the ground, I will still pick the Sabre, because the Sabre looks better. It handles better, but worse in different situations. And the Sabre's just simply my ship. I love the Sabre. Why I didn't create it? I would have loved to have created it at the same time. So let's move on to the next place. All right, let's run over to the next place. This expo center is huge. And it has the ability of having this area place on the other side as well. So as Anvil gets small ships, we might end up seeing it take a heck of a lot longer to see them all because these expo centers are big. While the ships are small, there's a hell of a lot of them. So you have to travel all over the place to see them all. Now, as I said in the other room, we have that thing in front of me. The F8 a lightning which is my type of ship it's basically the big brother of the saber there are some numpties out there that say this is the big brother of the hornet but that's wrong because it is literally a copy and paste of the saber with a couple of modifications made to it so this ship has two size three hard points at the front two size three hard points on the wings, two size four hard points on the wings as well, and then two size three hard points on the top for a total of six size three and two size two weapons. It also has missile racks, which are located on the top. I'm not sure what size they are, but as for equipment, it has one size two power plant, two size one coolers, and four size one shield generators. Now, if I go ahead and jump inside of it, we can go ahead and see its little MFD screens. <laughs> it's got two tiny MFD screens and then two other ones. So it has the same four as the Sabre does. Now, if we jump on the outside of the ship and have a look around, as you can see, it resembles the F no, it resembles the Anvil, no, the Aegis Sabre very well. I can't move my camera. There we go. It, it resembles the Sabre very heavily. While it is modified by Anvil to be one of their ships, it is an Aegis ship, basically. So it's humongous. It has an absolute crap ton of armor all over the place, protecting you from everywhere. And it's able to go forward very quickly. It is a souped up military spec ship that has massive survivability and is a heavy class fighter. This ship you do not want to be crossing because it will kill you. Even if you're in the F7A, the military version, you still die because this thing is just so much more powerful. And I want it. Morphologist has an excellent video on the F8A Lightning. So I'll link that in the description of this video for you to go ahead and check out. Now, if we just run over to the other side, you have the Anvil Terrapin, which has two size two hard points on the nose. That's it. It comes as like a little turret thing. So it has full gimbal. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the ship is supposed to do, so I'm going to take a look. Okay, so it's a scanning and exploration ship. So it has very good maneuverability with all of its VTOL engines, as well as this big old whatever the hell this split engine thing is on the back. And it has an interior, unlike most of the other ships. So it has a single cockpit thing here in the middle, which is a support station I suppose. It has a toilet and a bed. It's probably a shower toilet mix thing. And then the pilot seat at the front here. So if I jump in the pilot seat we can see that we have... Oh, that's bizarre. We can see that we have uh, 
I'm going to assume this is six MFD screens, which allows you to obviously see a lot of your system specs. Now, it's a big ship, but a small ship at the same time. And that's the scanning dish on the top, which allows you to scan down things that are further away, as well as probably get more detail on what they are before you move closer. Now, if I go ahead and turn it on, definitely has no missiles, because I can't open it. I also can't close anything. So if I jump out of here, I'm going to jump in the support seat, because I'm not sure what that is designed for. But I believe that would just simply be the sensor dish, which probably also has a spotlight on it. It doesn't want to let me in it. Okay, there we go. What does this seat do? Okay, well it has a screen that flicks down. Power off, exit. It doesn't do anything at the moment, which is to be expected. Scanning's not in the game yet. But the Terrapin is an awesome little ship for quickly moving around, having high maneuverability for scouting and exploration. And it doesn't have very much firepower, which means it really is just for scanning exploration and I suppose scouting. So running over onto the Anvil Valkyrie. If you haven't noticed, Anvil have a hell of a lot of ships. <laughs> so this one has a lot of weapons. So it has two size two repeaters on the front. They're the Badger repeaters. Uh, it has two remote size threes. It also has two manned turrets, which are two size threes each, and it has two door turrets. I don't know what size they are, because Urkel's not saying. But if we head inside, we have a big hangar bay thing, which can ha hold some vehicles, not all of them. You have the size three guns, which are on the side, which I suppose are the door ones. So I guess the size three. Underneath, we have what should be a bunch of seats for dropping your soldiers everywhere and access to one of the turrets and more seats on the other side. Come on, door, open up. We head up the ladder. Which takes a little while because this person apparently doesn't know how to go up a ladder. I guess the easiest thing to do. We have a crap ton of beds. I believe this is... No, I'm not even going to bother counting them. We have a toilet, a shower, a sink, probably a mirror behind it, but it doesn't work. I don't have a helmet on, so I can't turn my light on. We have two more seats here, which are for accessing the other two turrets, the remote ones. We have the pilot seat here, which has access to six MFD screens. And if I jump inside, we can have a look at the exterior. So looking at the exterior, it is a very big ship. It has VTOL capabilities, which allows it to take off and leave atmosphere very quickly, going completely vertical, as in to simply jump up. You don't need to look up, you just simply go up. So it has a decent amount of firepower, but it is designed to be a drop ship. It's designed to take troops from A to B and throw them all out the back. If you jump out the side doors at the current time, it tends to snap your legs and kill you, so <laughs> everyone just sort of leaves through the back at the moment. So it has two size 2 shield generators, which means it has a lot of HP, but it's a very big ship, so it technically doesn't. It has two size 2 power plants, so you're not going to be running out of power. It has two size 2 coolers, so you're not going to be overheating, and it has a size 2 quantum drive. So you can stick the military XL1 on it, and you'll be getting everywhere within a couple of minutes, I suppose. And now let's run over to the, I believe it's the final ship, which will be the Anvil Carrack. Now it has four turrets on it. Each of the four turrets has two size four Rhino repeaters on them. It also has two size 3 shield generators, one size 3 power plant, two size 3 coolers, and a size 3 quantum drive. 
which means I th which one is it? Which means you can stick the military TS2 on it, and you can go everywhere in under six minutes. You can go from Crusader to New Babbage in five and a half minutes. Now this ship is big, and passing the Pisces, which is its little snub fighter, we are greeted by a humongous ramp, which goes into a not so big cargo hold. You can fit some of the ground vehicles in here. There are many that are too big to fit in the carrack. So underneath, if these doors open, okay, the manual. Open these doors, you can come in and you have some component access, as well as ladders that take you straight upstairs. Heading through this door in the middle, we have access to docking collars, which will go outside, as well as, I believe, escape pods. Yeah, some escape pods on either side. If we head forwards, we have a, another area for storing tiny little vehicles. But I don't believe you can actually get them in here, because I don't think they are ramps. Can I open them? I can call the elevator, I can't open them, so I can't see. But this does have a fair amount of cargo space, even if it can't hold very many vehicles, because you can't get them in here. Now, moving on to the front, we have more escape beds. We have weapon racks. We also have more component storage somewhere. So moving to the very front of the ship, we have access to one of its turrets, which takes a very long time to get to. I'm going to head under the bottom, but I don't think there's anything else down there. Uh, button, button. Elevator don't work. can call the elevator up, I can't call it down. There does not seem to be a door down there. So it takes a long time to get to the turret, it has a fair amount of space, it has a heck of a lot of weaponry and very good survivability, but it's a very big ship. So it's quite easy to shoot at. Now, I think this side is the elevator, I'm going to use the ladder, because the ladders tend to not break, and it seems that the elevators are not working at the moment. So going up this very tall ladder, We'll go up somewhere in the ship. Now, we're up somewhere in the ship, I'll find out in a second. We're up at the hangar. So that's the hangar that is a good amount bigger than the um, Pisces actually is. We also have the... We have access to some of the turrets on this side and some of the turrets on the other side. We also have access to whatever this thing in the middle is. I don't know what it is. So let's head on over to the other side of the ship. These doors need to be sped up, they're too slow. Heading to the other side, we have... I guess engineering? You can probably create items and then you have some component storage, probably. Let's go ahead and head to the back of the ship. So heading to the back of the ship. Apparently this might be the front of the ship, it says bridge. So we have more escape pods. We have the front of the ship, which... These seats up here currently do nothing. There's a little elevator that takes you downstairs. Let's see if I missed anything at the back. That one was that one, that one was that one. That's the little elevator that takes you downstairs. That's another service ladder. On this side over here. Um, access to one of the turrets. Probably more escape pods down there. Engineering, access to things like the engine and some of the modules. What's behind it? The ship is a lot bigger than I thought. 
Is there anything on the other side? And if there's not, I'll go down. It's another one of the turrets. That's the engineering access in the middle. Don't know what that is, but bloody loud. I'm gonna head down the ladder. Heading down the ladder into the middle level of the ship. We have component access all over the place. We also have the access to that little elevator thing. This is a manual door apparently. We have access to one of the giant ass coolers. And some components on this side. And to the other side it's also just components apparently. So not a lot at the back of the ship. It's isolated so we can defend it quite easily from pirates coming in to try and disable your ship from the inside out. Now let's head right back to the front and then go down the bottom into the middle, the other side of that wall. Yeah, while the ship is not terribly big, it's complicated to move around inside if you don't know where you're going. And I have no idea where I'm going, so... <laughs> I'm just sort of running around at random, hoping that I find things. So I'm probably going to miss a lot of things. Now, eating myself off the front, about breaking my legs this time, you have your pilot seat and then your two co-pilot seats. Which, just like the ones upstairs, I don't believe they do anything. You have your server racks inside of here for data running and everything when that gets added as well as any chip tuning that you want to do. You have more component access behind that I believe. Heading into here and on this side you have... I'm going to guess this is the captain's quarters. Yeah, this will be the captain's quarters. I'm Behind here you have a toilet and a shower, and they're not mixed ones, they are separate, which is... Is that a working mirror? The game has a working mirror, but it looks kind of funky. Okay, that's the first working mirror I've seen in the game. Someone died, but they're revivable, but I'm not going to be doing that. So heading down to the front, we seem to have like a conference meeting area for going ahead and discussing what's happening aboard the ship, I suppose, as well as probably eating. Let's go to the other side. On the other side we have recreation and a giant hole wouldn't do an abyss, so we have a Whatever that is, it's supposed to be a pool table, I think, but it's kind of an odd shape. Heading behind, we have crew quarters. Let's through this door. To the abyss. I want to see into the abyss. It's not letting me cram my camera through it, since I can't force it to spawn. But I don't want to walk through it, because it's missing. Oh, I can open the door. Aha, it's bond. This has uh, showers with privacy doors. Where's the toilet? Well, apparently they can shower, but they can't go to the toilet, because there are no toilets. Unless that's what's behind this door. Okay, so behind this door you have the toilets, okay. So the toilets and the showers are on separate sides of the ship. Let's go ahead and head further back. So further back you have the medical room, which has recovery beds, which don't actually do anything at the moment, on either side. You have the storage area on that side, which has some um, cultures and stuff that you can do in there, science stuff. Go ahead and unscrew your buddy. 
On the other side, we have the medical observation room, your oxygen. There should also be nitrogen mixed there, but there isn't for some reason. We have syringes, medical stuff, and all sorts. And then in the middle, you have the tier 2 medical bed, which will be able to fix things like light respiratory damage or muscle fatigue, as well as slightly more advanced ones like heavy respiratory damage. But if you do things such as break your arms and legs, you won't be able to get those fixed there. Heading behind this, you come to the elevator, which I'm going to use to go to the top of the ship. So if we just go to the cartography deck, there's the exit, I said. So up in the cartography deck, you have this little map thing. If you jump in there, you can't get back out. So don't jump in there. On this side, you have access to an escape pod. More escape pods, probably identical on the other side. You have a manual airlock. They have to open there. And you can close it so you don't depressurize the ship. Explosive decompressurization isn't a thing. Period. It's not real. But depressurizing a ship will obviously go ahead and make all your shipmates suffocate to death. But there's the little hangar thing that's at the top of the ship, which is designed for spacecraft to go in. Now, it has a small gravity well for when you're in atmosphere, no, uh, when you're in space, but it's not very big. But yet the ship is incredibly tall. If I jump off now, I would die. So the Amber Carrick is a very good ship if you have a couple of competent turret pilot, well, well turret users. And you can also have a little snub pilot, which can either go ahead and com like complement your fight capability or to allow the, pi uh, the commander to get away. And you also have the little cargo bay at the back, which allows some of the ground vehicles to be used but not very many of them. So it's a big ship. I, I would use it with other players, but you only really need one person that has one. So a lot of ships in this game, such as the little gladiator thing down there, or the hornet over there, or oh, hawk, sorry, or the little hurricane thing there, or the Pisces, Instead of having to have multiple of them, you can just simply have one person that owns a big ship, like this one, and then the rest of them can just own little ships, like the other ones. So this ship is very much for friends only.